Hi, my name is Mike, and this is the second of my Cruise America RV walkthrough videos. I'm making this video today on the 30-foot Cruise America C30 vehicle. I know RVing is extremely, extremely popular in this country right now, uh, you know, due to coronavirus, and it's sometimes pretty hard to find information about these vehicles online. So I wanted to make this walkthrough to kind of talk about the vehicle and show a few things about it that you might not be able to find on the website. We, my wife and I have rented these quite a few times, so I consider myself fairly, at least a little bit knowledgeable about them. You know, obviously every trip we're still learning something new, but we really enjoy the lifestyle and, you know, hope to someday own our own RV at some point. And in the meantime, we'll keep on renting, and hopefully this video will be helpful to other people who are also renters like us. So, apologies for the noise in the background. My uh, next-door neighbors are demoing their house. Um, but just to give you a little walkthrough on the video, we'll do like my previous video on the 25-foot RV. I'll walk around the vehicle from the outside and show off some of the features on the outside, and then we'll go check out the interior of the vehicle. So one of the first things you can already see on the outside on the 30-foot RV is this huge amount of storage space that the vehicle has. And it's accessible from the rear as well as both sides. You've got this one here has a drain in the bottom, so if you wanted to fill that up with ice, you're having a boondocking party and can't have a whole lot of beer. Um, also in the back you have a full-size spare tire. Cruise America does not provide a, a jack. If you do get a flat they recommend you call their roadside assistance. You have a hose for your fresh water. Please don't stick this into your septic system. That's for your fresh water. I'll show you the hookup for that here in a second. The back, this one's been dinged a couple times as you can tell. It does have backup sensors as well as a trailer hitch down there at the bottom. Now, Cruise America used to charge extra to use that trailer hitch. I'm not sure if that's still the case, um, you know, just because of the additional wear and tear on the uh, powertrain of the vehicle when towing. Over on this side, you have a folding plastic table. I'm not going to take it out right now. It kind of takes two hands, and I'm holding the camera with one hand, but it's just a standard folding table, folding legs. There is a light, as well as two standard household electrical sockets in here. Now all of the household electrical sockets as well as the USB ports inside the vehicle only operate when the vehicle is connected to shoreline power or the generator is running. The accessory lights, those operate at any time because they operate off the household battery. So we're going to walk our way around the driver's side. We'll just look at all of the different little connections and features. And one of the things I really like about the Cruise America RVs is that they all have these little pin systems to hold all the doors up so once you open the door push it into place it won't fall on your head we've got a connection for city water as well as a fresh water fill tank now that hose I just showed you a minute ago could screw right into here or if you stop at a place that only has a uh, water spigot you can just hook up to that stick the other end in there fill up your fresh water and you're good to go I like to travel with a full tank of water I know that makes my gas efficiency a little bit worse but I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Fresh water is something that's pretty important even if you're just stopping on the side of the road to use the toilet or whatever um, you want to have fresh water. I don't want to get somewhere and find out that their water doesn't work and then not have water for my trip. Unleaded fuel. This is the shoreline power connector over here. Typically it should be plugged in to that gray box on the inside. This means it draws power from the uh, vehicle's electrical system. When you're parked at a campsite that has uh, 30 amp outlets you, or a home, you would just unplug that and plug that in directly. This will allow you to run the uh, vehicle air conditioner and microwave and uh, on the uh, outlets that I talked about a minute ago. You also have a 30 to 20 outlet adapter. Using this is fine if all you have is a 20 amp outlet. Just be aware that you can't run the microwave and the air conditioning at the same time. You probably can't run the air conditioning at all on a 20 amp circuit. Down here, you have the vehicle drain. Now the gray and the black tanks and the cap are both pulled off at this time. That's because I'm about to return the vehicle. Uh, obviously you would want those closed typically and then just open them when you're draining out uh, the two tanks. There's a hose up here. It's stored under the body of the vehicle and it's uh, probably about 15, 10 or 15 feet long. It's all stored inside of there right now. Um, next is the compartment with the vehicle household battery. The 4000 watt generator under here. 
Now, just like with any small engine, Cruise America does recommend that you check the oil in this periodically while using it. Uh, it draws from your standard, from your vehicle fuel tank, runs on regular gasoline, and it has a safety feature so that it won't turn on if your vehicle fuel tank is too low. The exhaust is right there. Be careful when running this. Uh, don't. I recommend not opening this window when running the generator. You just don't want fumes to uh, get inside the cabin. And also, please be courteous of other campers. Don't run the generator during quiet hours at a campsite. From the front, it's a Ford E450 Super Duty chassis, just like the Ford Van Series. And the nice thing about that is that any Ford dealership can service it if you have any mechanical issues. You don't need to take it to a specialized uh, heavy-duty fleet truck dealership. Use a standard Ford oil, windshield wipers, headlights. Everything on the front is just a standard as a Ford E450 van. Over here on the passenger side, you've got some additional cargo space. This is, your, this is your shut off for your propane. Now, typically, you want that on all the time. The fridge runs on the fridge runs on propane if you're not hooked to shoreline power, and this will help you cool off the items in your fridge. Uh, there are some states that require you to turn off the propane uh, when, for example, uh, filling up the gasoline tank. Above is the vent for the fridge. That's the back of the fridge. Actually, let me just walk around one more time. There's one more thing I didn't show off on the uh, driver's side. Also over here, I walked right past them. We have the vent for the water heater and the vent for the household furnace. I've honestly never used the household furnace. Um, my understanding, it can draw your propane or your electric quite quickly. Um, like I said, I've never used it. I've never been anywhere cold enough to need it. I feel like these vehicles stay pretty warm on the inside. So, let's come back around. We're going to walk inside the vehicle here in a minute. I wanted to show off this door. So it's a dual screen door and a solid door. And just like the storage compartments, it's got a latch to hold it in place. So, one thing I really like about this is that you can separate the screen from the main door itself. So then, now we have just a screen door, and it's got this slide here. My wife and I use this a lot to, you know, for example, if I'm outside cooking something on the fire and she's inside preparing something in the kitchen, she can just pass it out to me. This, you know, prevents so many bugs from getting into the interior of the vehicle. Slide it closed. Like that. Over here on the back of the door, you have a door lock and a deadbolt as well. Um, we had some problems with ours. The deadbolt was sticking. It probably just needs a little WD-40. Um, one of the things I've noticed right now is just because of the popularity of RVing due to the coronavirus, it seems like Cruise America does not have the time to perform some of the general maintenance and inspections on these vehicles that they might normally do. Um, We've never had a mechanical problem before any of the times we've rented. So, you know, having a few small things wrong on this one was a first for us. But again, I think it's just due to the nature of the industry. They're cycling these RVs through so fast, they don't have time to do the general maintenance checks. So just something to be aware of. You might want to spend a few extra minutes with your salesperson. Uh, you're just checking out all of the vehicle's systems prior to departure. So walking into the vehicle, you've got couple switches one of these is for the exterior light right up here and we can actually turn that on as well as some floor lights around the interior of the vehicle now again all these all of these lights operate off the vehicle's built-in household battery so you don't need to be hooked up to shoreline or have the generator running for any of those you can see them throughout the cabin of the vehicle they're uh, dual stage lights one flick of the switch turns on one half the second push turns on both halves to make it a little brighter and these lights are all over the place I don't even have all of them on there's one under that cabinet there's one under that cabinet you can see there's one under the sink there's one in the bathroom there's one up here for somebody staying in the overhead bunk so just tons of lights um, outlets all over the place uh, for example you can see there's a couple household outlets right up there there's household outlets with USB right behind the bench there's more 
behind the sink there's more in the bedroom so plenty of places to plug in just remember that all of the household style electrical outlets do not work unless the vehicle is plugged into shoreline power or the generator is running again same thing with the microwave you see the display is not lit that's because the generator is not on and i'm not plugged into shoreline air conditioner controls right up here at the top let's turn around again for a minute and i'll show you the features of the cab so again standard ford e450 series cab power windows power locks the radio does have an aux input and a CD player that says it can play MP3 CDs. I don't own any CDs anymore. I probably haven't owned any CDs in a decade, but if you do, uh, you can, I assume you should be able to listen to them on here. Um, mileage, tripodometer, tachometer. Um, if I were to start it up, you'd see all the normal gauges there on the dashboard. Oil pressure, fuel, water temperature, cruise control. There's an emergency start button down here. I'm just going to focus on that for a moment. That's if you're running into problems with your battery being almost dead. It draws additional power, I believe, from the household battery to crank the engine. I love the amount of storage right here, all of the cup holders. Um, honestly, we used a lot of these for bottles of hand sanitizer on this most recent trip. Again, just due to coronavirus. Can't be too careful. You know, we did spray and wipe everything down when we got in here. I know Cruise America cleans it, but we just wanted to do our own little cleaning when we checked out. Um, also throughout the vehicle, you've got roof vents. These are operated with the handle here. You just pull it towards you, ratchet it. Be careful if you're parked on a hill, uh, which way those vents are open. We did notice a little bit of water come in uh, at one point during our trip. Um, it was a, We were on a downhill slope and it was raining really hard. Normally that shouldn't be a problem. So again, looking through the cabin, you've probably already seen it in the background. It's just a ton of storage in this vehicle. You've got huge cabinets on both sides. Uh, you've got a full size, you've got a long couch, it's probably five, five and a half feet. I know the Cruise America website lists the exact specifications. Couch folds down into a bed, dinette folds down into a bed, and then you have the overhead bunk up here. So technically this sleeps up to seven, but I feel like this would be extremely crowded with seven people in it. When we travel, it's just me, my wife, and our dog, so this is plenty of space for us. We've got a broom back there, windows, all of the windows open. They also have these blackout sliding curtains. So when these are closed, it does get quite dark in here. The only things that still let in light are those rooftop vents I just showed you. Three burner gas stove. We've only used this a couple times, but we tend to do most of our cooking outside. Uh, it does have a vent and a hood light, and there's a, the vent vents outside. Um, microwave with a rotating plate. Nice deep basin sink. And you can see very deep storage compartments. Pretty much everywhere they could, they stuck drawers or cubby holes of some sort. Even down here under the fridge, there's a storage compartment. The fridge is a Dometic uh, two-way fridge. It'll run on gas or electric. Um, mine is off right now just because I'm getting ready to take it back, but typically what you would do as part of the checkout process, your salesperson uh, at the rental office should help you with this, and that's just to make sure that it's turned on and that it's set in the auto position. In auto, it will run on either propane or electric. Um, obviously, if you have to have propane or electric for one of those two options to work, um, typically you should get quite a quite a long time uh, run time on this on propane. Um, you know, depending on how frequently you use your propane. Of course, if you take a lot of hot showers and wash a lot of dishes, you're going to go through it at a faster rate than if you're just using it to keep your stuff in the fridge cool. I get a lot of questions about the fridge, and I wanted to point out this sticker on here. It says, this refrigerator requires up to six hours pre-cooling before use, must be kept level, open refrigerator only as necessary. These fridges are not as efficient as household refrigerators. Please keep that in mind. I did see one person comment that, oh, they were so mad at Cruise America because the fridge ruined $300 worth of groceries. Now look, I don't know how you're packing $300 worth of groceries into this space, but if you are, that's too much. You want to keep your stuff spread out and don't pack it in too closely. 
Don't open the door any more than you have to. I'm going to turn this power back off just again because we're getting ready to return this. If you stand there with the door open, all the cold air is going to come out really fast. And again, everything needs room for the air to circulate inside. It cools by the air circulating through the inside. And if your stuff is packed in there so tightly that air can't circulate, you're going to run into cooling problems. And the light is out on mine. That's another thing. The bulb is actually missing from there. It's another thing I feel like they would have caught. So here's just showing the inside of the freezer. And again, don't pack your stuff in here too tight. You'll see there's some more hooks scattered throughout the, the cabin. A smoke detector, some more storage above the door. We like to use this storage compartment for things that we use outside. Um, you know, flashlights, dog harnesses, things that we travel out the door with frequently. Looking back towards the back of the vehicle, there's a couple things I wanted to point out here. This is the control panel. So this shows you everything about the status of the vehicle. You can turn the generator on, the water heater, the water pump, the hours meter that shows the level, uh, the hours usage of the generator. And Cruise America does charge a little bit for generator usage. Um, I think it's 350 an hour, so just something to be aware of if you're using the generator a lot. Um, the water pump you need to turn on if you want water pressure somewhere where you're not connected to city water. This provides water pressure for the sink, the toilet, the bathroom sink, and the shower. So we press the levels test. Just shows everything is low, fresh water is full, LP gas is at two thirds, the battery is fully charged. And then again, you take your finger off of that and the, the levels test goes dark again. So you do, you do want to walk by. I, I, I probably check this more often than necessary. I'll press that button and check it almost every time I walk by the control panel. So again, more storage above the sink. You've got some compartments for plates, bowls, cups. All these cabinet doors latch. These are a little bit crooked on here. So walking back a little further towards the back, you'll see there's some more lights. Lots of lights throughout here. Stand up uh, separate shower with a plastic door. Another issue we ran into ours, and again, I feel like this is something they would have caught if they weren't just so busy right now due to coronavirus, is that on ours, some of the wheels are out of the track, so it's pretty tough to open and close the shower. You can see that up here as well. So it does open and close, it's just it's not as smooth as it would be. You kind of have to grab it and yank it. Um, if these wheels were properly in the track, that wouldn't be a problem. The shower does have a skylight directly above it. That's one of the things in the 25 foot RV, the skylight is off center, so it can be difficult for tall people to stand up in here. Uh, having the skylight centered on this vehicle does provide a bit more headroom, although I feel like the shower is narrower. Um, also on the 25 foot RV, the shower only has a curtain, which kind of tends to get a little bit grimy. I like the solid doors, I feel like it's cleaner. So turning around, we're gonna just take a quick pick quick peek <laughs> inside the bathroom and you'll see we've got sink, medicine cabinet and again there's a ton of storage in here you've got shelves, cabinets, under sink there's a little bit of space to stick stuff under there this is a foot pump operated sink with there's the pump the, the foot operator right there few more hooks up there. Now you can close this door and it provides a little bit of privacy when taking a shower. You also have a curtain back here in the bedroom that you can use to kind of separate it off the bedroom area. Now this one is again this is a little something that's kind of broken on this one. Uh, this, this RV has uh, been well used so normally that should latch to pro provide sort of like a partition. It's kind of kind of broken on this one. I said we've never had mechanical problems with an RV before this one and you know it was perfectly livable but just stuff to be aware of so back here in the bedroom this is something I really like about the 30-foot RV as opposed to the 25-foot RV is you are able to get in and out of the bed from both sides on the 25-foot model the bed is in the corner and if you're sleeping with your spouse uh, and one of you wants to get up you may have to crawl over the other 
Also, we've got a lot of storage in here over the bed, several big storage compartments, drawers, coat closets. These are very deep. It's probably pretty hard to tell in the video how deep they are, but it's a very deep closet uh, with a bar. Same thing down the other side. You've got a drawer. The switches on the side are for the little reading lights. Another closet, slightly smaller. This is the man's closet here, <laughs> I guess. Uh, a little smaller. You've also got some USB and power outlets down there on the side. Now, they're only on one side of the bed, so I don't know why. Uh, I guess they figure the person sleeping on the other side doesn't, doesn't need to use a phone or charge anything, but... Uh, hopefully in future years they will update that to include outlets on both sides of the bed just because everybody I think in the world has a, has a smartphone and various electrical accessories. So that's pretty much it. Um, I do appreciate you watching my videos and liking and th give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you if this video was helpful for you um, feel free to leave any comments in the comments section I'll try to answer this as best I can um, one thing don't ask questions about how much this costs um, there's just simply too many variables uh, the size of the vehicle you rent the time of year uh, if you rent peak season or off peak season um, how often you run the generator how many miles you drive uh, whether you order any of the optional kits like the bedding kit or the kitchen kit. I like to compare it to the price, basically the price of a nice hotel room, I think is a pretty pretty comparable price. Um, with the bonus that you do get your own full kitchen and your own private bathroom, and you can bring your pets. You know, we love to camp with our dog. And, uh, you know, so that being said, your price may range from... $90 up to $300 a night, uh, you know, again, depending on all those variables I just mentioned. Your best bet is to go to the Cruise America website and plug in the details of your specific trip, which will give you more accurate pricing. So, any other questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Like I said, this, this vehicle had a few mechanical problems, I think just due to the rapid turnaround that they're going through right now, uh, due to coronavirus. Um, it's very safe. I, f I feel like it was pretty easy to drive. Um, you know, I've driven big cars and vans and trucks most of my life. If all you've ever driven is a Miata and you go to drive something like this, you might have kind of a hard time because of the size. It is a big vehicle. It's about, uh, I just off the top of my head, it could be 12,000 pounds. I suppose I could check in the door. And uh, 30 feet long is a pretty big thing to drive. Um, but it's not hard to drive. It drives like a, you know, like a van or a truck. And we really like it. We really enjoy camping in them and going to various state parks and campgrounds throughout our region of the country. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it was, please like and subscribe. Feel free to ask any questions in the comment. Thank you so much, and stay safe out there.